today we're going to continue on the same thing. Last week I talked about the uh, the different the four kinds of uh, uh, demonic spirits that Christians fight with or that we war against. Remember Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities and powers, uh, uh, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we analyze and we, you know, we identify all of them starting from the principalities, you know, the powers, the rulers of darkness, and then the spiritual wickedness. So last week we finished with the spiritual wickedness, but then in the, in the teaching of last week, I made mention of the fact that the spiritual wickedness in high places are the spirits that possess, you know, human beings or that, that take their dwelling in humans to use them to cause all kinds of atrocity, all kinds of uh, uh, misery and pain and through different kind of means or ways that they try to influence them to do things contrary to their nature. You know, so... And I also made mention that there are 16 different uh, uh, spiritual wickedness or spirits that have been named in the Bible. So briefly, I'm just going to run through them, call them by name. You know, time will not permit me to, I mean, to deal with each and every one of them individually. But by the leading of the spirit, I've selected a third of them, about five of them that I'm going to deal with today. So but briefly, I'm going to run through them. So. When the Bible talks about spiritual wickedness in high places or spirits that possess men and women, and it is all through scripture. And right from the beginning in the Old Testament, these spirits were present, but we did not have knowledge of them until Jesus came and he revealed unto us what these spirits are. You know, and you realize that when Jesus made mention of some of these spirits, and later on, Paul came and in his letters, he made mention of others that gave us more light as to who these spirits are and how to identify them and how to deal with them. So you realize that some of these spirits, they come, there's a strong man, as when Jesus said sometime, I think in the book of Luke, he said that when a strong man guards his house, his goods are safe. But when a stronger than he cometh, he overpowers him and takes away the armor in which he trusted. So... We realize that a strong man is the one that uh, possess or the spiritual wickedness are also known as what? Strong men, as Jesus called them. But then you saw, you will see that these strong men, when they come, they come with a bunch of them. They come with a bunch of, uh, of demons. So one strong man will have other demons underneath him or under his umbrella that works for him or work as tributaries or as accessories in that in, 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 in in that uh, um, spirit or in that faction, what they are performing. So let's look at some of these spirits here. The Bible makes mention of the spirit of error. It talks about the spirit of the Antichrist. It talks about the seducing spirits. It talks about the spirit of fear, the spirit of bondage, the spirit, uh, the spirit of infirmity, spirit of whoredoms, the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of haughtiness or pride. It talks about deaf and dumb spirit. The Bible talks about the pervert spirit, the lying spirit, the spirit of jealousy, the familiar spirit, and of course, spirit of divination. See, these are all different spirits that possess men. And you can tell the presence of this spirit by the manifestations or the symptoms. For example, when a person is sick and you go to a doctor, the doctor will diagnose your sickness based on the symptoms that you will tell him that you will tell him how you feel it's, oh doctor i'm having this severe pain you know in in my head you know this headache and 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 uh, no, I'm, I'm vomiting and i have a high temperature and based on these symptoms the doctor can know okay these are symptoms of let's say fever or let's say these are symptoms of flu so by based on the symptoms that you manifest the doctor will be able to diagnose the type of sickness Sometimes you give some symptoms and it, it will be like these symptoms are like as if it's, it's like maybe a flu or it's fever or it's a you know, hair fever or something. So then they'll have to run tests to, to, to identify exactly what kind of sickness that I mean, showing this, those symptoms. Same way when it comes to demonology, demonology. Demonology will also, you'll be able to identify a spirit based on the symptoms 
or the manifestations that come our way. And some of these manifestations is what we're going to look at today. So first of all, I want you to open your Bible with me to the book of Acts, the chapter of 16, reading from verse of 16. Here we're going to talk about the spirit of divination. The spirit of divination. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse of 16 really, uh, uh, to 18, it says, And it came to pass, as they went to prayer, a certain damsel or girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. You see, the scriptures here is telling us that Paul you know, and his, his disciples were walking through a city and there was this spirit or this girl who is possessed with the spirit of divination. And the girl was saying, oh, these are the men of God who provides unto us the ways of salvation. You know, he was, she wasn't uh, making campaigning for them or popularizing or publicizing them. No, but because she was in the field or, or, or possessed by a spirit of divination, and what does the spirit of divination does? The spirit of divination, what it does is that it's an attempt, you know, uh, uh, to foretell the future or to discover hidden uh, 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 knowledge by means of occultism or spirit by other spiritual means. That's what divination means. So by this spirit, she was trying to foretell or tell things that are hidden that are not known. So don't underestimate that the enemy don't have power. The enemy has power, but his power is very limited. He doesn't know all things. All right? So, that's, you remember that Jesus said unto us that, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. If you analyze that scripture uh, carefully, you realize that Jesus even acknowledged that the enemy has power. So, here we see some of the manifestations of the enemy's power through a divination. By fortune telling, how do we find or see or, or, or realize the spirit of divination in our life these days? Spirit of divination manifests itself through like fortune telling, through card reading, palm reading, psychics. You know, they'll it, call you on the phone and say, okay, I can tell you something about your future. These are all our spirit of divination. And the most dangerous of all of them is what the, the reading of horoscopes. People think that these are, oh, these are just, uh, these are harmless. Nobody's getting them. I just want to know if they will come true. Hey, before you realize, you get so hooked on them that every time, instead of consulting the Bible to know what the future holds or what God is telling you, you want to read your horoscope and tell you your monthly horoscope. I can guarantee you there are people in this life right now that if you, according to statistics, if you ask nine out of ten people, they will tell you their, their, their zodiac sign. I am this and I am that and I am that. Oh, what? Because of what? Horoscope. And people think that these are nothing. They are harmless. But that is what the spirit of divination in, in other different form of manifestation. You know, a spirit of uh, the divination is what? Trying to seek knowledge or future knowledge outside of God through demonic means. That is what is known about spirit of divination. So... When you go to a fortune teller, you are consulting the devil as what well, the spirit of divination in that person trying to tell you stuff. Then we'll move on to other stuff. Let's, I'm not going to stay too much on each one of these, so I'll just briefly talk about one and I'll move to the next. The next one I'm going to talk about that really deals with people in our lives is what? The spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness. Let's read a scripture from there from the book of Isaiah. The spirit of heaviness, the book of Isaiah. Uh, uh, no, but before I do that, listen, I want to show you something. You remember in the Bible, in the olden days when uh, uh, Moses, God sent Moses and uh, Aaron to go into to Pharaoh to tell him to let the people go. I'm still talking of the spirit of divination. I'm going to go back now. So when they went and they went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, who is this God that you said I, I should let the people go? And he say, 
David, uh, uh, Moses said, okay, I'm going to show you a sign of this guy. So he, Moses put down the rod, which Aaron had. Aaron put down his rod, and the rod turned into a snake. And right there and then, uh, 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 Pharaoh called his magicians, and they also did likewise. Where did they get the power from? The demonic power. But that's also the spirit of divination in operation. As a matter of fact, I want us to open that scripture and read quickly that scripture from the book of Exodus, the chapter of 7. There's something that I want you to know before we move on. Exodus chapter 7, reading from the verse of seven, uh, 11. And it reads, Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. If you read from the verse of 12, it says, For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So you see, the spirit of divination didn't just appear. It's been, a, it's been around since of old. But now it's manifesting itself through magic. You know that people will call themselves a oh, magician. They will cause things to appear. Doves will come out of hearts and stuff like that. These are all spirit of divination at work. You know, people will say, oh, they are harmless. You see some churches inviting magicians to come into their church, you know, for a, 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 a birthday celebration of children, you know, to come in and, and you know, and say, oh, this is just harmless. And no, don't, don't, don't mix it up. If you don't know it, just pray that the, the Lord will reveal unto you what these spirits are. They are not harmless. They are, they are very subtle. They will come gradually until they can get you hooked up in their devices and their means of operation. And when you are hooked up, it's, very, very, it's not easy to get off. So now let's go to the spirit of heaviness. Open your Bible to the book of Isaiah, the chapter of 61. I'll be reading from the verse of 3. And it says that, and to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Spirit of heaviness. Many a time, this spirit of heaviness will manifest itself in people wherever there's too much, ex I mean, there's excessive mourning. When there's grief, you know, the spirit of heavy, uh, heaviness will manifest itself through depression. Somebody will be so depressed that life becomes meaningless. And they have all these kind of suicidal thoughts. They want to kill themselves. Oh, they, life is so repetitive. The same thing doing every day, every day. Wake up in the morning, go to work, finish work, come home, watch TV, full in the morning, go to work, finish work, come home, watch TV. So they see that life is like, a, a, I mean, a, a routine. They don't see nothing out of it. And out of boredom, Depression will set in. People who have so much uh, uh, grief or mourning, they lose someone or a broken relationship, and the, 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 the pain that will result out of the broken relationship will result in depression, and they will isolate themselves. They don't want to be around nobody. That is the spirit of heaviness in operation. The spirit of heaviness will cause you to feel self-pity, to have a pity party on yourself, that you don't want to have, do nothing to, 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 to lively up yourself. But the Bible is telling us God will give you the spirit of praise, in exchange for the spirit of heaviness, that when you feel like there's this heaviness in, in your spirit, you know, that can cause you de to be depressed or, or, or to have all this kind of negative self-pity and all of that, right there, just make up a decision, make up your mind to praise the Lord. So by so doing, that spirit will lift up of you. You see, I'm telling you this so that you'll be able to identify when these kind of spirits try to many, meander their way into your life. They will come through open doors that you open for them. You see, they will do things that will cause you to open the door so that they will have the access to come into you. So watch out for these things. It's okay to mourn, but when you mourn, have a time limit for it. Don't mourn for a year, for two years, and three years, and so on and so forth. That more so do you open yourself up for the spirit of heaviness to set in. So the spirit of heaviness manifests itself through what? I have broken hearts, depression, sorrow, and grief, and suicidal thoughts. And all these things are symptoms or manifestations of the spirit of heaviness. Now let's move on. We're going to go to the spirit of whoredoms. The spirit of whoredoms. The spirit of whoredoms talk about. There is a scripture that we'll talk about. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Hosea, the chapter of 5, reading from verse 4. 
Hosea chapter 5, the verse of 4. And it reads, They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Here, the prophet Hosea, God asked the prophet Hosea to marry to a prostitute. And Hosea was married to a prostitute, and God used that, you know, as an example, as an analogy to prophesy to the children of Israel. That just like Hosea was feeling how his wife would go a whoring or going after other men, sleeping with other men, so God likened that to when men turn away from God to seek and worship other gods. So the spirit of whoredom simply means not just physically going to visit a prostitute or, 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 or sleeping with a prostitute per se, but worshiping other gods, serving other gods beside the real God that he has called us to serve him. You see, so anything that will come, as, that will get your attention and cause you to, de uh, to devote more attention to it other than God becomes an idol or idolatry. So that's the spirit of order and manifestation. There are people who have been so hooked up on their vehicles, they are so hooked up on, 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 on television, on sports, that it is their God. Everything they do, that's all they want to think about. They don't want to go to church, they don't want to do nothing else. Nothing matters to them apart from what they are hooked up on. I remember there was this lady that I used to work with back in uh, my, uh, before, some time ago, and this lady was so much, all she do, she talks about was her husband, and my husband this, and my husband that, my husband this. I say, my, my sister, what is it everything is about your, your husband? I don't even hear you talk about nothing else about your husband. There's nothing wrong with loving your husband, but the Bible says love God first. There's God first, then your husband, then your, your, your ministry or anything else. So if you put your husband first before God, that becomes an idolatry. And guess what? This lady, by doing that, you know what happened? Her husband started seeing other women. And then she was so devastated. She came to me and she said, but my brother, you know what's happening? I suspect my husband is doing this. I said, listen, whenever you place something before God, you make that person first before God. God will make sure he takes that thing away from you. But let me tell you something. No matter what you do, you can't control your husband. But if you can console God or if you can seek God and let God control all things, the God who knows all things, he will be able to control and turn your husband how to the way that it will be towards you. At first, she wasn't agreeing with me. So finally, she, she finally, I finally got through to her, and she accepted it. And guess what? We start praying and studying the Bible, putting God first in her life. Eventually, she and her husband ended up in the church. The husband's life turned completely around. That she, he doesn't hear nothing else but what? Their relationship for each other has been solidified because of their relationship with God. God has become their common, uh, a common means of bond by them, you know, for them. Their love for God has become the, uh, the binding force that has kept them together up to today. So what am I saying? Anything that you will try to, to, to place ahead of God, that will take your attention more than the attention that you're supposed to give to God will become what? A, 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 an idolatry whereby it is a manifestation of what the spirit of boredom. Some people, their cars are their idols. You see them early in the morning. Wake up, the first thing they do, they go by their car. You see them dusting it up, you know, just wiping it, you know, cleaning the tires and the rims and everything. That's all they think about. They sleep at night and they're peeping the, through the window just looking at, oh, if the car is okay, if anybody is coming around. They can't even sleep. They wake up first, they don't, they don't have anywhere to go, but they have to go and sit in the car. Why? Because the car has become their idol. You know, they're worshipping that, more or less. But you don't, it's, it becomes so subtle, you don't see it like that, because you say, oh, nah, this is nothing. But then it's taking your attention away from God and placing it somewhere else. There are people when there's a, a, a sports game or a sports a, a tournament going on, they will not even go to church. They won't do nothing else. They'll be glued to the TV. You know, I'm not saying that TV is not good. But anything, as I'm saying, anything that can take your attention off God and cause you to depend solely on it, like with your whole life revolves around it, becomes an, an idol to you. And that's what the Spirit of God does, an idolatry. So these are some things that you should know that whenever you see these things happening in your life, just flee away from it. Just stay away from it and know that nothing can take 
the place of God. If anything takes the place of God, it becomes an idol in your life. And that's why the spirit of uh, war comes in operation. The next one I'm going to talk about is the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage, you will, saw, you will see that scripture in the book of Romans. Romans chapter of 8, the verse of 15. Romans chapter 8, the verse of 15. And it reads, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So here, the Bible is talking about the spirit of bondage, which works very closely with the spirit of fear. See, the spirit of bondage is the spirit that causes people to be so hooked and dependent on uh, natural elements and stuff that they, you know, they're supposed to be in control of them, but now these things are controlling them. A typical example of a spirit of bondage is addiction, the various kinds of addictions, you know, fears, compulsive sins. But the one I want to really center on is what addiction. If you are addicted to anything of any kind, I want you to know that the spirit of bondage is in operation in your life. There are people who are so hooked up on alcohol that all they do, they don't have, they don't have anything else. What is addiction? Addiction is a, it's a dependency upon an element that you have no control over, that is controlling your life, is ruling your life. Now, some scientists are trying to say that alcoholism is a disease, but I beg to differ. Alcoholism is a spirit. It's, you know, it's a demonic spirit. That operates under the spirit of bondage. Addiction can come in various forms. If alcoholism is to be a sickness, that means it's the only kind of sickness that is spread through advertisements. You see sometimes people, you know, uh, 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 magazines, advertising, vodka, and all kinds of stuff. See, so it's not a sickness. It's a spirit that comes and, and take over a person's life. And then all you do is you live your whole life based on that. There are different kinds of addiction, addiction to pornography, addiction to cocaine, you know, sexual addicts and all these things. These are all forms of spiritual bondages that the enemy used to entrap man. So he will use something as the bait, now alcohol. You know, sometimes it will come through friends that you associate with. See, in every friendship, there's always something that serves as the bond that holds the friendship together. I knew of somebody who was a university graduate, but was a close friend with somebody who didn't even finish uh, 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 the uh, elementary school. You know, and his, his wife was so concerned that I don't see what they have in common. My, here's my husband who is a, a university graduate with a master's degree and hanging around with somebody you know, who even doesn't know how to write their own name. And she was worried. She says, I can't understand it. But then when we came to find out that because they were drinking buddies, when they come together, all they do is just drink. And before he realized he was totally hooked on alcohol, that it, it took only the, it, the intervention of God to break him loose. So you see, these are things that when you see in manifestation, don't say, oh, it's just the science can tell you something else. But the, the one that have the final authority is Christ Jesus. According to his word, if only you study this word and talk about, you know, and study it carefully, you realize that it will lead you to so many truths that will blow your mind beyond human comprehension. So these are spirits, that I'm going to deal with. The last one I'll talk about is briefly known as the familiar spirit. Familiar spirits are spirits that, you know, uh, like they deal within the family, you know, and they know like, uh, 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 for example, like necromancy, the consultation of the dead. Spirits that can co uh, help you to consult the dead and to tell you stories about them. These are spirits that live within families that they can impersonate or in, uh, 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 in dwell other people and try to foretell or tell about hidden things and stuff. These are all demonic activities. When somebody tell you, I can consult your dead relative to tell you, know that it's a familiar spirit at work in that person. Don't go there because you'll be hooked. Don't fall for these things. You see, I'm trying to bring this out to you so that you will know how the enemy works. He'll come in so subtly 
trying to make you think that, oh, it's harmless, or there's nothing harmful about this, or it's just, just a ham harmless thing. For example, the reading of horoscope, as we saw in the spirit of divination. Don't mess with these things. But I showed you, gradually you get yourself opening and get hooked to it. Before you realize, you start going to the fortune teller. If you can read your horoscope, that means you are curious. You want to know about what tomorrow holds, what the future holds. That one will lead you to the next step forward by going to the fortune teller or calling the psychic line. And before you know, you are so deep, you can't even get out. So these are, are just a portion of the spirits we talked about. You know, all the 16 spirits that the Bible talk, they possess the spiritual wickedness that possess them. You notice that each one of them that we read were spirit, they were possessed, people that were possessed with them. I want you to take your time and go through all the scriptures that I gave you and you realize that in all of them, there was one common thread running through them. They were spirits that possessed people and they manifest their deeds through them. So by the manifestations, you'll be able to do, if you're seeking any manifestation or silver, you don't have the power and the ability in yourself, seek a deliverance ministry and talk to the pastor or the minister there. Maybe they'll be able to help you. Time is not on our side, but... I believe by next time you tune in and we'll continue. There's still, the next time around, I'm going to show you how to wage your war against these spirits and how you're going to have successful battle against them. Because the battle is already won. It's already a fixed fight. The fight, the, 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 the outcome of the fight is already determined. Oh, my time is so small. So if you are here and you are listening and you're not born again, you want to be born again, just say this after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me with your blood. I invite you into my life as my Lord and Savior. If you have prayed this prayer, I believe that you've been born again. Your spirit man has been renewed by your flesh and your mind stay the same. Find yourself a good Bible teaching church and then study your word to show yourself approved. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.